2008 MasterCard Memorial Cup. I'm standing at the Zamboni entrance. You can hear the fans start to get it charged up. They've got the noisemakers right here. They've got face painting. They are ready to go. They have been waiting for this opportunity to celebrate a championship. However, their home team, the Kitchener Rangers, have to battle the Spokane Chiefs. One of the important facets of the Rangers is going to be a second line man wearing number 19. Here's a minute with Nazem Kadri. For our fan support is fantastic. Uh, all, of, all the fans, you know, they come out, we're sold out every game. Uh, it's fantastic, you know, uh, how, they, how they come, you know, they cheer us on every game. Just like uh, a little example, a little taste of it was in Game 7 against Belleville. It was, uh, the place was really, really pumping. It was great. So it would be a dream come true. Uh, you know, ever since I was a kid, I was actually, I think, in Grade 9. Uh, I'm from London, Mem Cup was in London. And I was back when Sidney Crosby was playing in it, and uh, you know, thinking back, uh, I was, you know, I was wishing one day I'd get a shot at it, and here I am today. I think uh, stick handling probably is one of my strengths. Stick handling and my playmaking. I think I, I see the ice pretty well, and uh, you know, I, I like to handle the puck. Well, I'm gonna throw a name out there. It's Josh Eunice. He tipped the puck in my face. Harmless mistake, but uh, you know, it's a scar. Ladies love the scars. Kadri is willing to get any type of scar if it ends up with him lifting the Memorial Cup when it's all said and done. Well, throughout this tournament, the fans have been spectacular. So two of the teams and the final two teams are ready to make their entrance. The final walk of the 2007-2008 campaign, side by side, from the Kitchener Rangers. seem to like to score in bunches. So with that in mind, Spokane has one of the longest layoffs between games at this event. You have to go back to 1986 when the Guelph Platers beat Hall for a four-day layoff without games. How does that draw in to them dealing with a potential quick start? Well, they've had breaks in between all of their series and a 10-day break after sweeping Lethbridge out of the Western Hockey League Championship. And so I thought in the first game of the round robin against Belleville last Saturday that the team looked as crisp as if it had been playing a regular schedule. I really don't think that layoff is going to have a significant effect for the Spokane Chiefs. And the Chiefs are on a roll. They've won eight straight postseason games under the guidance of that gentleman, Red Deer's Bill Peters, in his third year at the helm. And there will be little doubt that this team will 
will be prepared. And on the other side, one of the best in the Canadian Hockey League, flat out, trying to win his second Memorial Cup. He did so in Quebec City with the Rangers in 2003. And you can see how elated he is, knowing that his team is going to be able to feed off of this crowd, especially in the early going. But this guy is so good. He's been so successful. He's run such a great program here in Kitchener that many think this may be his last game. And he really likes the way his team has responded in Game 7 against Belleville with an impressive win. And then we all know what occurred in the 9-0 triumph in the semifinal. The ceremonial puck drop. And Peter, every time they have had a situation where they've been up against the wall, not only has Josh Eunice respond, but so too has that top line for Kitchener. We'll see, though, they don't have the luxury of losing this one here today. It's not a seven-game series, it's not a two out of three, and it is surely not a round robin. This is the real deal. And we're about set for it to unveil. It should be a gem, but first, our national anthems. John Newman. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight? Oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the command with glowing hearts we see thee rise the true no strong and free from far and wide oh canada we stand on guard for thee god keep our land glorious and free Oh, Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Oh, Canada, we stand on guard for thee. The Memorial Cup is 90 years young. Welcome to Championship Sunday. The starting goaltenders are brought to you by ADT. Always there for the visiting team for today's purposes. Josh Eunice of the Kitchener Rangers gets the call. The product of Toledo, Ohio, recorded a shutout in a semifinal triumph over Belleville on Friday. At the other end, an 18-year-old from Watson, Saskatchewan, Dustin Tokarski, in the round-robin win by the Chiefs 2-1 over the Rangers last Sunday afternoon. He turned aside 36 of 37 shots that he faced. The referees, the two-time Western Hockey League Referee of the Year, Andy Thiessen, and without much question, the number one rated official in the Quebec League, Francis Chiron, Ryan Lachine, and Kevin Hastings of the Ontario Hockey League will man the lines. 
the Rangers Memorial Cup champions back in 2003 when they beat the Hall Olympic in Quebec City 6-3. Derek Roy, Steve Eminger, Michael Richards, Craig Campbell among that trio. Spokane last won the title also in Quebec City in 1991, led by Ray Whitney, Pat Falloon, and Trevor Kidd. And offside, just 14 seconds in to the championship game, which brings us to our keys to the game. Brought to you by Yamaha. What kind of Yamaha are you? Well, for the Kitchen Rangers, they're going to need their top dogs. That top trio of Spalling, Asvido, and Halistuk to perform the way they did in the semifinal game. And if you're the Spokane Chiefs, don't deviate because whatever you've been doing to this point has worked extremely well with all three wins in the round robin. They good on Trevor Glass playing in his second consecutive Master Cup final. He was on the losing end of a 3-1 setback last year in Vancouver when his Tigers fell to the Giants. Expect this to be a slugfest, a battle for every square inch of ice all day, as it was one week ago. Left Colt Coper with Bruton and Wall as Spokane in the midst of a line change. The Kitchener top trio remains up. All they did is by 15 points and six goals. Nick Spalling to center and Hill shoot it in. And that's the one thing about puck possession, Peter. If you have the top line going out to get, get the check line, and the check line wins that battle, it really eliminates what that top line can do in the offensive zone. They're too busy defending. And another stoppage early. Bill Peters is the head coach of the Spokane Chiefs, learned to ply his trade under Mike Babcock, and isn't it interesting that Babcock is playing for a Stanley Cup, Bill Peters and his Spokane Chiefs playing for the Memorial Cup. He is about as intense as they come, and has done a wonderful job here in his three years behind the bench, bringing his team to the Memorial Cup championship game. And as we mentioned off the top of our pre-game show, this is a team that looked like it was built for next year. Playing some of the best hockey of his career. Duco with Kadri and Barker. They kicked it off with an early goal against Melvin. Six seconds in as Duco shot. Steered away by Tikarski. And the cat and mouse has really started now as that Blackwater Rutherford line comes out against the Duco Kadri Barker line. And the advantage that the Chiefs have as a result of that 2 1 round Robin victory. Justin Falk, he scored in that game. He tied the contest. Bumped into by Padre and Duco. Weber tees up the big shot. And the veteran Judd Blackwater fell in front of it. Padre, three points on Friday for the young 17-year-old. Loses the handle, and here comes David Rutherford as Blackwater was still. Roman Bergen, and Eunice just got a right skate on it. Oh, boy, to Rob, the fifth-round pick of the Dallas. Pretty good pace to start this one, as you would expect both teams really leaving it all out there. And you had to wonder if Spokane was going to be able to respond with what Kitchener was going to bring from the crowd. What a move by Timmons jamming away, and Tikursky answers both. What a start. This Timmons, Mashinter, Masioli line, I did not think was very good against Spokane in the round robin. And the Chiefs, known for their transition game. And here from the half wall, boom. It's a little chip off the boards, and look out. Roman Rutherford, Blackwater, it's Roman who busts through that seam, supporting the puck from behind to create himself a good opportunity. And then Timmons goes back the other way. He gets a crack at it, but Tokarski has that stick pinned to the ice. He wouldn't let it through. Robin Roman, who led the Chiefs with 21 points during the Western Hockey League title run. And this is a line that's been so close to clicking, but as of yet, it's been nothing but great chances, not a lot of finish. I really compared it to the Duco, Padre, and Vodka line, that they needed that extra game in the semi to start to click. Maybe Spokane's line will find it here today. Feel that could be a very key trio to the outcome of this game. They're not out there now. It's the top line of 
Bowman, Gruden, and Wall, and they have supplied all you would want more in the first three wins by Spokane. Bowman with seven points, five goals. He's a third-round pick of the Carolina Hurricanes, and he's just 18 years of age. Copeland, just 17. Working against Dan Kelly. Azevedo up the middle for Spalling. Spalling working one-on-one -on -one with Stefan Almer. He's from Austria. Spalling turning against Tyler Johnson. Here's that key matchup. Weber just held it in. Deflected. Kellis got to S5 in the event. Nearly strikes first. And Falk with a good play descended out of his own zone. Justin McCray in behind Johnson at the line. Well, Peter DeBoer, the head coach for Kitchener, told us that normally they set up behind the net. This time they're not going to do that. They're going to keep their feet moving as Nick Spalling does here. It goes point to point from Kelly to Weber. Weber keeps it in. And with all that traffic in front, the tip by Azevedo is still stopped, or just wide rather, by Dustin Dukarski. Alicek with two goals and three assists on Friday versus Belleville. Delayed offside coming up against the Chiefs and now called. We've met Bill Peters now. It's time to meet Peter DeBoer. He and Steve Spott have been at the helm here for seven years in Kitchener and what an unbelievable run it has been. The head coach and general manager of this squad has had several opportunities to move the American Hockey League level, has denied all of those and Kitchener and the people of Kitchener are happy that he did, but in his time may very well have come. Deco, a long wrist shot, held by Tukarski. Dustin Tukarski, Peter, is really come to the fore this year, ranked ninth as far as central scouting is concerned. And we talked about the November he had, stopping 90 of 96 shots in this event. But I, he really felt that he didn't get off to a good start in October, in late September. But his November was unbelievable, and he has taken flight since then. Creates confusion on the part of the Spokane Chiefs. Massioli gets possession. He has a lane to the net. Big rebound there for Massinger to pick up the game's opening goal. And this line, if it can maintain possession of the puck, will be key. But if it can also score, it could be a long game for the Chiefs. As you see there, the first of the MasterCard Memorial Cup for Brandon Massinger. And the Rangers find the board first. And the first Simmons with Massioli, who will most certainly draw an assist. His first point of the event as well. Nashinger. And I thought this line in its own way really helped set the table in the victory on Friday. Long shot from the point by Timmons. And Timmons the assist on the Massinger opening goal of his championship final at 5-0-1. We knew the Rangers were going to really be able to feed off of that crowd in the first five to ten minutes, taking advantage of that at the five-minute mark. And keep in mind, they scored the opening goal last Sunday as well before losing 2-1 when Halistuck opened the scoring shorthanded early in the first. Peter, in the pregame show, we told you what Kitchener would do off the draw. Massioli comes back, both the center and the weak side winger go to the front of the net. Now it's tough for the defenseman to decide who to pick up. It's a very well-designed play, a very well-executed play, and it really takes advantage of that no obstruction off the draw. Two big stops by Tukarski first, off Bodker and then from close range, off of Nazem Kadri. Call to Kitchener. 
They will be short-handed when we return to the Memorial Auditorium, but they do lead the game. Spokane gets ready for the power play with Bill Peters. Well, you can't be surprised with a giddy-up at the starting part of this game, can you? No, both teams are excited and up on their toes and going after it, so good start. Tell me about matching lines. Is that your plan with the last change, be able to get the guys you want on the ice? Well, for the most part, we're going to be able to get what we want, but it's not something that we're going to lose our focus and our flow with. We're going to make sure we get fresh guys out there no matter what. On this power play, do we expect to see a lot of action in front of Eunice right now? Well, I'd like to get a point shot established, so in order for that... To 20. In the blue paint, do a good job there. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Kitchener Rangers suffer the first penalty. Yannick Weber goes off for a slash. And on this look, you look to the right side of your screen. Judd Blackwater behind the net administers the slash in that midsection area. And as soon as it was administered, the hand goes up. Spokane enjoys the first power play. They enjoyed only seven power play chances in the three round robin games in which they were victorious in all of them. Yannick Weber in the penalty box. Matt Halischuk scored short-handed against Spokane last Sunday. Good job in the claps here by Halischuk as this puck moves towards the half wall. You see Halischuk get a stick in the lane, deflected up out of play. This is normally a very active penalty kill by the Rangers. Mitch Wall for Andre Roman. And Grayson Bowman, the trigger man, with five goals to lead the Chiefs. He can really unload it in a hurry. Block pass, courtesy of Alex Jelski. Battling with the 21-year-old captain, Chris Bruton, from Calgary. Bowman, he's drive, but stopped by Eunice. Alice Jack, a great wall in prison. Roman pressured by Timmons, who drew one of the two assists on the opening goal by Brandon Mashinder at 5-0 on his first of the tournament. And it's Timmons again in the right place. It's interesting sometimes in games like this how some of the so-called lesser likes can make such a big difference. Just on side of the line, Blackwater with Rutherford and McRae. Falk and Ulmer on the Spokane power play. Falk for Stefan Ulmer. Feeds it down low and good Blackwater. Ulmer drive. Blocked by the captain, Matt Pepe. Justin McRae to the front of the net. Tied up by Kelly effectively, but keeps his feet moving. This is the former Saskatoon Blade. Acquired in a deadline deal. Shot from the line by Falk. By Kelly, a chance to clear and done. Peter, one thing you have to be cognizant of at the Memorial Auditorium here in Kitchener on both sides of the ice, not only are the end boards extremely wide, but so too is the glass. You'll see a lot of bounces on missed shots come back right into play in the slot area. And the Rangers kill off the game's first penalty to Yannick Weber, who feeds it ahead for Duco. Mike Duco. No trouble for Tukarski. Peter, you mentioned some of the lesser likes doing things. We've seen Mashinger already score a goal. But here, Scott Timmons collapses on the puck as soon as it gets over the line. Great stick there in the lane. Gets possession. Gets at the distance. A very simple play, yet highly effective. Well executed by the underrated Timmons. And that line was extremely essential to the Game 7 victory for the Rangers when they captured the OHL title against Belleville. A matter of fact, Somewhat like today, Mashinder scored the first goal in that 4-1 victory in Game 7 on Monday, May 12th. And that's when you really see how important your third line guys are. Because if the top two lines maintain checking against each other, you look to that third line to provide that tertiary. Kitchener has already received some of that here. Well, Bill Peters back with his top offensive unit. Wall, Pullman, and Bruton. Bruton collides with Cadbury, and it creates an offside. Chris Bruton, the captain of the Spokane Chiefs, so what a well-spoken young man. And, Peter, it's easy to see why Bill Peters is able to keep and maintain the systems he has put in place. You have guys like Bruton who buy into the system and relay that message throughout the whole team. A credit to this game is Chris Bruton. He's that fine an individual. Scored a huge goal late in game three of the last 
World Series, the championship affair in the Western Hockey League. And he was a beauty. Still looking for his first of this MasterCard Memorial Cup. And pressured by the goal getter, Mashinder. Grayson Bowman. For Stefan Almer. And he'll flip it in. 11 4 shots on goal so far in favor of the Rangers. Massey only turned it over at the line. This is Chris Bruton trying to drive in on Chuton. Right through the crease, nobody home. And Messenger comes back the other way. And this is an area you don't want to turn pucks over against the Chiefs for their transition game. Kelly will move in. Blocked up by David Rutherford. Rutherford's from Ladner, British Columbia. Weber, a shot tipped in front neatly by Ackerson, who scored the first goal of this entire event. His first ever goal in major junior hockey period. He picked a pretty good time. Spencer Anderson, trying to drive in front. Unable to do so. Roman, good breakout feed. Rutherford and now Bowman, who will flip it across corner. There's that possession you talk about. Kitchener able to maintain possession there. Spokane's top line left with nothing. Blackwater, good stop. Another opportunity for Rutherford. Hit the side of the net. His units look sharp early. Roman into the slot. Kelly without a stick, but it turns off his skate as Trevor Glass holds it in. Keith supplying heat, looking for the equalizer. And that's when Scott Trigana says, that's about enough of that. Judd Blackwater, so close to top. Top scorers are brought to you by Boston Pizza. You're among friends. The trio of Azevedo, Halaschuk, and Spalling leading the way. Drayson Bowman has one fewer game and still seven points. His line mate Mitch Wall checking in right behind him. Michael Stinziani and Adam Perry, both with teams that have been eliminated. Great tournaments for those two individuals as well. Azevedo, Halaschuk, and Spalling coming off that huge 15-point performance in the 9-0 triumph in the semifinal on Friday over Belleville. It's Brandon Mashinter, in case you've just joined us, who has his first of the MasterCard Memorial Cup. At 5-0-1, Spalling blocked by Mike Reddington. McRae with Johnson and Levko Coper. Coper, an overtime hero versus Belleville in the Chiefs opener. Cowan moves in. Jared Cowan in front, jamming away Johnson, and Eunice stopped it and then hangs on. At times, the Spokane defensemen in the offensive zone will pinch, but they're not allowed that opportunity unless they get the puck out of their own end. Look at the play by Glass here. The veteran being bothered by Halaschuk. Quick backhand up the boards. Has to take the hit to do so. But from there, McRae, Johnson, Coper able to go down and at least maintain some possession and get the face off in Kitchener's end. Cowan, what a specimen this young man from just outside of Saskatoon. 6'5", 215. He has turned 17, but in hockey terms, he's a 16-year-old. You're going to hear that name a lot, especially when we begin chatting in reference to the 2009 National Hockey League draft. He'll be a very high pick. One of three really significant first-round picks for the Spokane Chiefs. Dealing with another guy who could be a high pick now in the battery. You know what the fans hear about it. Kitchener's cycle game, when it's at its best, so difficult to deal with. However, the team they're playing deals with it as well as anyone. Bowman, and he can really rip it. He showed you why, the product of Littleton, Colorado. He raises that stick about shin high and is still able to get that much on the shot. That's brute strength. He turned 19 earlier this year, but again, lots of eligibility. Sutron in front, what an opportunity for him. And it deflects out of play. Maybe it didn't even deflect because I believe the faceoff's coming outside. So straight into the man. Nazem Kadri winning the battle with Cowan and that when the puck goes back in Spokane's end, no call there made on Cowan. But Kadri remained out on the ship. Continued to keep that motor running. Ben Shutron with the pass out in front. The puck goes out of play. Difficult one, Hopper. The Carson handled it well. He's been a busy young man so far. 
Rutherford. Stick left by Mashinder. Falk. Massioli runs into him, gives up a lot of size. Well, Josh Eunice paying homage to Kitchener Rangers past. With Scott Stevens on that mask, Paul Coffey. A couple of those guys were returned here over the course of the weekend. A great alumni the Kitchener Rangers have. A storied franchise. And this building they play in here, the odd turned 57 yesterday. You wouldn't know it. Done a wonderful job here in Kitchener. This event, in every way, shape, or form, has been first class. Right around the horn. Well done. Azevedo, spalling. Alice Chuck carries on. Canada's overtime gold medal winning hero in the Czech Republic. And now the Chiefs will find themselves shorthanded for the first time. Peter, when we talked to Steve Spott and Peter DeBoer before the game, he felt that his team didn't battle hard enough in the round robin loss, the 2 1 loss. And here you're seeing very much what we saw in that game. As this puck goes behind the net, Spokane will send three guys back there against Kitchener's two. Reddington battling with Hallisjuck. He takes him to the ice. You see that outman situation, three on two. Well, this time they win the battle because the Rangers are able to draw the penalty. The Rangers, their first game today, they were over. Savito misses Hallis Chuck in the high slot. Yannick Weber, 17 power play goals during the regular season. He can really rip it. And does there. Tekarski, not sure he stuck it. High in the air, knocked down by Letko. Cooper at the Edmonton product sends it the distance. Great poise by Cooper. No one else knew where the puck was. He settled it down, got it to distance. Azevedo leads all players scoring with 11 points but stripped by Bowman and once again the Rangers must go back to regroup with this one nothing lead in the title game of the 90th Memorial Cup next year we'll head to Ramouski Quebec Bodker racing in for Hallis Chuck pocket pick McRae and Bowman to center three Rangers on him so we'll back in and the Chiefs killed penalties in the postseason in the Western Hockey League playoffs at over 90%. Blacker. And again, Tukarski will not take any chances. Bill Peters is very cognizant of the fact that Kitchener really likes to use the seam. So when that seam isn't opened up, it has to go back to the point there. Weber with a good shot, spalling, creating traffic in front of the net. That's just one other element to this Kitchener Rangers power play that you will see if that seam doesn't open up. 44 seconds to go on the manpower advantage. For Gunnar now up front for the Rangers with Duco, Kadri, Jelski, and Shutran. For Gunnar battling Bruton. Howling in the corner. Standed off by Tregunna. Find Shutran. Wrist shot. Seth Compton. Good work to tap it by Duco and two on two. Short handed with Bruton as he shot a 10 clock. And now Shufran takes a penalty. Peter, one thing that I thought Kitchener did very well in the semifinal was throw traffic in front of Belleville's keeper, Mike Murphy. And the same thing here. As the shot goes to the point, you look at Duco right in front of the net, providing the screen. Tregunda there to pick up the rebound. When the play went back the other way, as you see the shot there from Shutron, it results in a penalty. It was a two-on-two -two situation, and Shutron goes up against Compton, takes the cross check to even things out. Peter DeBoer drawing up a Rangers 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 team about to be short-handed. Kelly, shot in the ankle, just that hurt. Elmer took it right in the top of the ankle. And she 20 seconds, power play, Blackwater, and he can deliver it with authority. 
does so, but into the midsection of Josh Eunice. Well, Judd Blackwater has been waiting to explode in this event. Peter, I think he's hit probably six posts and or crossbars. He's had several other chances where the goaltender has been better than he has. But Bill Peters really felt that this line would be key, including Blackwater, to perform and produce here tonight. Scored 10 big goals during the playoffs. Scored five of them in the last three games in their titanic struggle with the Tri-City Americans in the Western Conference Final. That series, seven games, five of them to overtime, three in double overtime. Roman wheels in. Peter, just when Bill Peters felt it was time for this line to explode, they do exactly that on the power play. It all starts with a good first pass out of the zone. Falk to Roman. Roman circles the wagons, leaves it for Blackwater, and with Eunice down, he finds that puck size hole, short side, blocker side. He didn't get all of it, but he got enough of it. So tough to defend, to, to defend against when that player is circling the net and he goes short side with the pass everyone thinks he's going around the short side pass makes it happen for Blackwater. So the Chiefs as they did Sunday find a way to drive even late in the first after giving up the game's first. Ray Roman will draw an assist. Bruton lets it go. Hits Coleman will carry him to neutral ice. And fall the other assist on the equalizer on the power play at 16-10. You knew they couldn't hold this guy off the board forever. We're tied. In a booth just next door to Sam and Pete is E.J. McGuire of NHL Central Scouting taking copious notes. I know this is the final game of the season, but you're always assessing talent. We always are, and there's a few draft-eligible guys whose names will be called, Mike Boddicker and uh, Mitch Wall. They'll, their names will be called come Ottawa, come June. Are you also then looking ahead to next summer as opposed to this summer? By the name of Kadri? <laughs> Yes, we are. We're taking uh, copious notes and we're looking ahead. EJ, it's always a pleasure to see you. Back to work you, you go. Thank you, Rob. And the teams have gone to work. Brandon Mashinder opened the scoring at 5.01. Judd Blackwater with his first on the power play has tied it from Andre Roman and Justin Falk at 16.10. Sam, it's been almost exactly what we would have expected. Yeah, he didn't think anyone was going to run away with this game based on the style of game that Spokane plays. And you thought, as the Rangers have done all tournament, that they would open the scoring. They did that, but Spokane wasn't about to relent. Battle back to tie things up. What a great first period so far. 16-8 of the shots on goal in favor of the hometown Rangers. And credit to Karski, he made a couple of good saves. And Kitchener might have had an opportunity to have the second one and start to run a little bit with all the momentum. Now the Chiefs own the momentum and the line would score the equalizer back out. Spencer Anderson strips it and he sends it deep out there with Tregunna and Atkinson, the so-called fourth line for Peter DeBoer. Anchored by Tregunna, who started this event on defense with injuries to Weber and Bortuzzo, who both made their way back into the event. Anderson jamming away, backhander! And Spencer Anderson, whose last goal came in a regular season game on January 3rd, almost restored the Rangers' lead. In front of his father, John, the head coach of the Chicago Wolves. And here, Kitchener makes some adjustments, Peter. You see Spokane sending three guys in, while Kitchener says, we're going to send three as well. They win that battle. Spencer Anderson with a chance on the forehand, stopped by Tukarski. He would get another chance on the backhand. That, too, stopped by Tukarski. Tukarski has been terrific. 18 saves in this opening period. Hope it looked like he took a high stick, and yes, it's been spotted as I take a look at the other referee. So the Chiefs, who have just tied the game on a power play, about to enjoy another. And it might be more than two minutes. Nick Spalling gets the gate 
for the Kitchener Rangers. And in the offensive zone, Kitchener, as we showed you, likes to really switch things up. Well, this time that puck doesn't really get out of the zone and it's not won by either team. So everyone collapses on the puck and when that puck battle ensues, Nick Spalling gets the stick up on Coper. Blackwater tied the game on the power play. Coper looks to be all right. He's not eligible for the draft until 2009. I think by that time his stock will have elevated tremendously. He's been very, very good in this event and in the Western Hockey League playoffs. Not bad for a guy who came out of double A midget in the Edmonton area. Didn't even play in the Alberta Major Midget Hockey League. That's great for young players who are watching to never give up. Well said, I think. Timmons, he's had an excellent first period. Sends it down the ice. Spurgeon bumped by Mike Duco. And this is Mitch Wall leaving it for Jared Spurgeon and Justin Falk. From Snowflake, Manitoba. About 117 miles southwest of Winnipeg. Palmer up the middle. Bowman taps it ahead, but waiting was Pepe. Really good job by Kitchener's penalty killers in the neutral zone. Just taking away time and space, getting sticks in lane. Rangers doing an excellent job on this penalty kill. Palmer right wide finds the speedy Roman in the high gear. Roman racing in as a man in the slot. Bodker collapsed, got a stick in the lane. Roman has it again. Blackwater, Roman tapped in front towards Rutherford, but went off Kadri into the corner. Just onside. Rutherford intercepted by Mikel Bodker, and back comes the young Danish forward. His name will be called in the top ten in Ottawa. And maybe higher than that. Weber's name's already been called a fifth round pick of Montreal. Backhands it in. Late in the first period of this MasterCard Memorial Cup Championship final, Tyler Jackson with a burst. Justin McRae will battle Ben Shutron. Mashinger opened the scoring for Kitchener even strength. Judd Blackwater with his first replied on the power play for the Chiefs. Well, after 20 minutes, I don't think it is anything more or less than we expected. Every inch of ice being battled for and a tight, tightly contested affair. The play of the first period is brought to you by Easton. We define performance. Trailing 1-0, the Spokane Chiefs turn it up in high gear. Roman with that great speed gets around Jelski. He goes short side with the pass. Blackwater to the front of the net. Goes upstairs over Josh Eunice. And credit Roman with his great speed and a good pass to trick everyone going short side. And Blackwater is finally on the board. Through 20 minutes of the title game. We're back where we began. Lots coming your way in the first intermission, including a chat with CHL Commissioner David Branch. Welcome back inside the Kitchener Memorial Auditorium. The Rangers and the Spokane Chiefs, the Western Hockey League champions, tied to one in the title game of the 2008 MasterCard Memorial Cup. And here's why. Kitchener Rangers open the scoring in this game off a well-executed face-off play. Masioli's rebound. Goes right onto the stick of Mashinger to pick up the goal. And then Andre Roman with a great wide drive to find Judd Blackwater in front of the net. He goes upstairs under the bar to beat Josh Eunice to tie it at one. The first of the tournament for each of those players. The first period scoring summary is brought to you by GoRVing Canada. What will you discover? Visit GoRVing.ca for a free CD-ROM. The Rangers with a decided edge in the shots on goal department. But even where it counts most if you're Spokane. Levko Koper, Nick Spalling with a five-point outing in the semifinal along with Halas Chuck and Azevedo, but so far in this game, 
held off the score sheet, courtesy of Johnson, McRae, and Cooper, and that is how the second period will begin. Sam, when the goal by Blackwater went in the net, you could almost feel a Spokane sigh of relief all the way up here. Azevedo, good stick by Cooper to lift. Azevedo keeps it alive, falling. Runs in the Johnson. And the diminutive one wins the battle. Could almost put that on recording and then just push a little button. He is something special and a great inspiration to guys who play this game that are small. And he may very well play three more years in this league. He's just 17. What a player. This guy's not bad either. Jared Cowan to Mitch Wall. A lot of talent on the surface in the final of the 90th Memorial Cup. Jared Spurgeon, his brother, won a Memorial Cup in Kelowna. Tyler in 2004. Kevin with a little room to operate, and Spurgeon raced back to slap it off his stick. And with Cowan being back there, it allows Spurgeon to really use his great skating ability. Cowan is a very calming force. Spurgeon a little more active. A great pairing by Bill Peters. Wall loses it. Partial three on two. Blacker, Duco, and Kadri at the end of a long shift. Blacker, he can really shoot the puck. And that was not his best, but just wide. The Spokane goal getter, Chuck Blackwater, in his final game of junior hockey. Rutherford stopped by Eunice. Rutherford, nice work on the back track. So important to have your players committed in all three zones on the ice. And Tyler Johnson does it maybe better than anyone in this hockey game. Battling with Nick Spalling, chases him down, will not let him go, then presses him, sees on the right side of the puck. That's what allows him to do that. Gets on the right side of the puck, takes his man off the puck, flips it out into the neutral zone. Picture perfect defensive play by Tyler Johnson. Johnson, five goals, eight points during the Western Hockey League playoffs. He scored game-winning goals in both games three and four of the league championship series versus Leftwich. One of those in overtime in game three that really did put the Hurricanes away. Leftwich had that game one to nothing until the last two minutes when Chris Bruton scored on a great individual effort and then Johnson won it in overtime. The game's opening goal scorer and Brandon Mashinger, Bill Peters and his squad really feeling each other out here in the first two minutes and 13 seconds of this period number two. And I think if you're either coach, I don't think you'd be unhappy with the way in which your team performed in the opening 20. Kelly finds Spalling a second round pick at Nashville. Halischuk in deep on Trevor Glass on the floor check. One thing about Kitcher, they never stop coming at you. Cooper content to flip towards McRae. Step by Kelly, and then lost the handle. Well, that would have been an excellent scoring opportunity for McRae, who has yet to register a goal during the postseason. A little bit different role than what he was in in Saskatoon playing for Lauren Mollican. And I think since coming onto this team and on that checking line, they just want him to take care of business in his own end of the ice and in the neutral zone. And if the story comes, yeah, well, that's an added bonus. He was relied on more for his leadership in scoring with the Blades. Good lead pass. Atkinson Town with that long reach. And heads to Roman, who's been outstanding in this game. And he can fire it too, steered aside by Eunice. Two time, got away with one. Scott Tregunna. Spurgeon long lead pass, that is something that Spokane has made a lot of hay with during this tournament and 
the Western Hockey League playoffs. You wonder why Jared Cowan is so good. Watch what he does here. He uses his stick, and then it's most defensemen here would chip this puck high out into the neutral zone. Instead, he has the poise to put the draw weight on it to allow Roman to catch up to it. That's why Jared Cowan, a couple of years down the road, will be considered one of the best players available in the draft. Eligible in 2009, and you can book his tickets for Slovakia and the Czech Republic. He'll play for Canada's under-18 team in that annual event in August. For sure, Kadri drops it. Duco a shot, and Stefan Ulmer blocked it. And in transition is Bowman with Mitch Wall. Wall from Seal Beach, California. Ulmer let it go through a partial screen and it went wide. This game, like you mentioned, Sam, really starting to settle in. Bowman a shot, he scores! Six to the tournament for Grayson Bowman. And the Chiefs with their first lead. Peter, you said it best when you had the chance to watch the Spokane Chiefs play in the Western Hockey League Championship against the Lethbridge Hurricane. This guy's release is unbelievably quick. He can shoot it without having to lift the stick up much. He goes into a good area here, turns, and look at that quick release. Surprises everyone, including Josh Eunice. And with that puck on end, it wobbles and weaves just enough to go inside the post. Grayson Bowman has taken advantage of every scoring opportunity he's had in this tournament. Scored now in all four games, registered a hat trick in the opening game victory a week ago Saturday against Belleville and notched the game winner last Sunday. 2-1 triumph over Kitchener and he has put the Western League champions ahead by the same count in the same period. Rutherford, fans on a pass attempt, glass a chance, big save. The pads to stop Andre Roman. It's so interesting to see who the coaches put out after a goal. Kitchener puts out its energy line, and Andre Roman in the Blackwater line come out for the Spokane Chiefs. Glass pinches in, good opportunity. Blackwater's on the doorstep, so too is Rutherford and Roman. Eunice having to come up big with two stops after allowing a suspect goal. Bowman's tournament leading sixth from Chris Bruton at 4-11. And the Chiefs with two unanswered to lead. Johnson back out with Cooper and McRae. Johnson deflected wide. McRae turning. And the skates of Johnson sprawling on top of him, limiting his time and space and rubber about to pick up a penalty for the Rangers. That's what this checking line does so well for the Spokane Chiefs. They're talented enough, Peter, that they can control the puck. They can control the play. They can cycle on the play. And when that happens, your top guys, Spalling, Azevedo, Halaschuk, and now your top defensemen in Weber are out there trying to take the puck away. A battle there where Weber gets called for the cross check. Chiefs have connected with the manpower advantage in this game. Their first goal was a power play goal, courtesy of Judd Blackwater. They've gone ahead on the even strength tally by Drayson Bowman, who's from Littleton, Colorado. A lot of American flavor on this U.S.-based Chiefs team. Yeah, a little bit of everything, really. And you look at their European players, and look at some Canadians, Americans, it's a, a, a nice mix, and it's made for great chemistry in the dressing room. Glass scores! Trevor Glass on the power play, and the Chiefs with a two-goal lead. Trevor Glass played in the Memorial Cup last year for the Medicine Hat Tigers, and in the four games the Tigers played, he had just one assist, but two shifts after creating a good chance. He comes in off the draw and goes high glove side on Josh Eunice. I mean, Eunice can't get out any further than he is, but if you look off the faceoff, Peter, where his left pad is, it's way beyond that left post, and still there's room for Glass to find it, and he does so. Really overcommitting to the left side was Eunice, but Glass still felt he had a hole and he found it. And the Kitchener Rangers, who just yielded two goals, one minute and one second apart, have called a timeout.
Score a 3-1 here. Peter DeBoer decides to shut things down, deliver the message to his players, and doing so in a rather authoritative way. Glasses first in two Memorial Cups. A finalist with Medicine Hat last year on the power play from Chris Bruton at 5-12. And you have to credit Bruton with winning the draw. And you see at the start of this play, Eunice is way committed to the left and he over adjusts. And there is a hole there for Glass to find. The Rangers trail by a pair. After the timeout, sends out Duco, Kadri, and Bodker. Kadri losing his balance as Bruton shoveled it to the corner. Bodker carries on. Mikel Bodker dangerously to the front. Duco is up and now there'll be a smoke hand penalty. Special teams so important. Puck possession so important in these big games. The Rangers able to gain the zone and off. A very innocent looking shot from Bodker. Glass is forced to come down and check Duco because he puts himself in good position. When he does that, Glass commits the infraction. Duco goes down. And the Rangers now with a golden opportunity to really stem the tide. Chiefs are two for four on the power play. This is the Rangers' second crack. They need to start turning the tide back in their favor. They've given up three unanswered goals. Falling to Azevedo with Halischuk, the top trio. Bodker and Weber, they can both unleash it. Azevedo, Spokane takes that seam away. Weber drives through a screen. Tukarski's been excellent. What a battle, Falk and Spalling in front of the net. Bodker again wants the seam, but Coper in the road. Good shot blocked by Falk, and Jensen dumps it. Eunice, right to Falk. Three goals in 9.02 for the Chiefs. Have them in the driver's seat in this title game of the MasterCard Memorial Cup, but a long way to go, and in this event, no lead has really been safe. That's one thing we've learned. Three goal leads, two goal leads, doesn't really matter. Weber, Azevedo and Kadri as the Rangers, the team forced to come back now. This is new ground outside of the semi-final. In that game, they led all the way. They've only trailed for a significant point in time last Sunday against the same Chiefs team. Power play continues. Kadri off the skate. Bodker nearly loses it to Bowman, and now does will try and get away shorthanded. Grayson Bowman! Shot a wide. Chiefs looked like they might have got away with having too many men on the ice, and I think they did. Big kill by Spokane. Kadri with Duco at the line. Trying to feed it back, Roman off his skate, and he collects it with Rutherford and Blackwater. Judd Blackwater! Wide on the short side as this game starts to open up. And I'm not sure that's what Bill Peters wants right about now. No, but if you're Bill Peters, you can't sit back and relax either. You have to continue to put the pedal to the metal. Just ask Peter DeBoer and the Kitchener Ranger. And they are so dangerous, Spokane, in transition as they just showed us on the near miss by Blackwater, who has one of the three Chiefs goals. Masioli runs into Glass, who has scored a big power play goal in this period. Pepe knocked down by Glass. Here's Timmons with Masioli. Elmer finds Copa. And now Rutherford, he's been out there for a while, so he's headed to the bench. Spokane does a really good job of utilizing that weak side, Peter. A good example of it there as Coker was able to get it deep. This is not the type of team you want to trail by two or more against. 
with their suffocating style. But if there's one team that can come back, it's the Rangers. Timmons, nice work along the boards. Greeted by Johnson. Falk chips it ahead to Cooper. And now McCray with Reddington looking to jump up as McCray lost an edge and put himself offside. And again, Cooper, weak side through the middle, picked up by McCray, able to relieve the pressure for Spokane. Ortuzzo and Kelly. Ortuzzo just returned to the lineup. He's been out since game five of the OHL final with a shoulder injury. He's a Pittsburgh draft pick, number 20. Stalling steam rolled up. And Acevedo just fails to hold it in. The Spokane Chiefs lead by two as Glass finds net. DeBoer, what did you tell your team when you took the time out? What were you trying to get across? Well, just to relax. You know, we've, we've played over 100 games this year, won most of them, doing a lot of little things right, and made some uncharacteristic plays there, lost a faceoff, uh, lost a, a man in D-zone coverage. So, no, that's not our game. We've got to get back to it, and you have to give credit to Spokane. They're, they're putting us out of our comfort zone a little bit, and, and we've got to handle it better. How do you generate offense against a team like Spokane, which can shut you down? Well, you know, I think we're doing a better job tonight. We've got 23 shots. I think we're doing a better job, but I think we can still do more. We can draw more penalties. you got to win more battles down low. Thank you, Peter. And now it's time for the Kitchen to Rangers to come from behind. Peter? And here's so true. And here's what Pierre DeBoer is talking about. Off the draw, that is wide open for Glass to take it to, to the front of the net. A defensive zone breakdown by the Kitchen to Rangers, a rarity. season, 53 wins, 110 points. The Chiefs won 50 as well. Cooper to McRae with Johnson. Justin McRae, one-on-one -on -one with Dan Kelly. Nice work, McRae, a backhander deflects. And you can see some nervousness right now in the Rangers game. Really giving a lot of credit to this McRae line. It's Johnson and Copa really tying down Palaszczuk, Azevedo, and Spall. And that's not an easy chore. They've supplied 28 points in this tournament. 15 of them in the semifinal win for Pittsburgh on Friday. Rutherford, Azevedo lifts the stick of Roman. Pressure still on in the Ranger zone. Roman for Blackwater. They just failed to connect. Spall trying to hold on. Water. And it was his goal, Sam. Just over 16 minutes into the first, that completely turned the tide. Yeah, the momentum changed, and momentum is such a big factor in these one-off games. And they have two of their three goals in the power play. Tregunna working against Palmer. Anderson for Atkinson, who overskated the puck as he looked to get to the front of the net. Anderson. Roman. Finds Rutherford and now Blackwater. Judd Blackwater. Flex into the corner. Yannick Weber. Spurgeon steps up to make a good play at the line. Jared Spurgeon for Cowan. Right to Eunice, who's forced to make the save. Credit to Karski, he did a wonderful job helping his team stem the tide after they gave up the game's first goal to Mashinder. The Rangers looking for answers, trailing the Chiefs. Sam, one of the things Peter DeBoer has stressed to Steve's spot to get through to the D is to start pinching. Use that opportunity. If they can pinch more, maybe they can generate a little offense against the Chiefs. We'll see if that's effective, especially against the way in which Spokane utilizes that weak side. If the D can come down and help out, it may help the Rangers maintain possession in the offensive zone. Spokane with two goals, a minute and one apart in this second period. From Bowman is tournament leading sixth, and Trevor Glass is first. And the Western League champions in command. Kadri working against Cowan. Help of Duco and Blacker and Mitch Wall. 
to the line. Matt Pepe holds it in. There's that pinch that Rob referred to right there. Wall comes away with it. Off the boards with Coleman. To Nick Wall. He just kicked it away. Solid draw Cameron on Bowman. Glass. And Kelly will carry out. Dan Kelly keeps his feet moving. Kelly. Spalling is Kitchener in the midst of a change. As Evita. CHL Player of the Year for Halaschuk. Fans didn't have a lot to work with anyway. Bortuzzo blocked. Halaschuk backhands it and Reddington takes care of it. McCray and Cooper. Let go Cooper. Stopped by Eunice. Halaschuk backs it out to neutralize. And you can tell this entire building is holding its breath. and trying to chip it by Almer. Not so. Here's a partial opportunity for Halaschuk. Big save to Kersky. Rebound. Spalling will be a penalty to the Chiefs. Spalling, an opportunity lever, and another great save by Dustin Tukarski. All he does is stop pucks. And a lot of them. 24 already in this title game. Matt Halaschuk has scored some big goals in some big games, and here on the rush has the opportunity to try and cut the deficit to one. A bullet of a shot as he uses fault for a screen. And see Cooper draw the penalty right there with the slash, middle of your screen. Then it goes back to Weber for a great shot. But Tokarski again, equal to the task. He has been fantastic in this game. Halaschuk, five goals in this MasterCard Memorial Cup, the fourth round pick of the New Jersey Devils. And the Rangers with an enormous power play opportunity. They really need something to draw on right now. They're giving up three unanswered goals. Weber, he shot blocked by McCray in the lane. Intercepted by Tyler Johnson and sent down the ice. Bill Peters quickly changes his penalty killers. Brute and Bowman up front with Falk and Cowan. Little size in the backhand in that pair. Falk. Right to Eunice. And he might be forced to hang on and he nearly gave Bowman a freebie. My goodness. And might have been game set and match. Zavito off the ring. Kitchener trying to dig it free for their top trio out there. If the game possession, here's where that seam opens up, where everyone collapses, but not the case. They did, but the puck came out. Here's Hallis Chuck with stalling. Callen broke it up with a skate. By Kerr. Finds Weber. Azevedo, his shot deflects just wide, and there was some room on the far side. Azevedo again. Flashing back, set up through that seam, and Tukarski with another fine stop. Weber, good puck movement this time by the Rangers. Weber with traffic off a of body wide. Vodka rips it, bit over top of the net. Azevedo chipped in front by Spalling. Penalty over. Big bounce off the end glass. Jared Cowan moves it out, throws a hit. Coming to an NHL arena in a couple of years near you. Off of Vodka, deflects it in. Tukarski swings it. This is Tregona. Blackwater heads back the other direction with Rutherford. David Rutherford blocked by the captain, Matt Pepe. Shoot Paducah. Roman let it go. Pepe. Spurgeon pinching it 
Niskin, but there to cover up with Glass, one of the three chief ball getters. And what an addition Trevor Glass has been to this Spokane team. A Memorial Cup finalist, the Cochran Alberta product, last year with the Medicine Hat Tigers. Does not want to lose a second straight title game. And is doing his part to make sure it doesn't happen. Pelner just missed from inside the line. Curtis Pelner. Bumps with Padre. Spokane winning all the little battles. Pelner upends Padre. Mashinger to the line and just wow. out. So close. Jared Callen has been stellar in this game for the Spokane Chiefs, and we have talked about him all tournament long. And it's such a pleasure to watch a young guy who's physically developed as he is to be able to match that physical skill with the mental side of the game. And Callen never seems rattled, even when he gets caught out of position, which is a rare occasion. He is a special one. Not eligible until 2009. For the first overall pick. In the Western Hockey League Phantom Draft, Jared Cowan. <laughs> Kelly with two minutes to go in the second period in a 3-1 Chiefs lead. Long shot, no trouble for Dukarski. Yeah, Dustin Dukarski sees a little harm on that harmless shot from Kelly, so rather than play it, he does the wise thing, cover it up. And Dustin Tukarski has been tested 27 times in this hockey game. And I think you have to also credit the defense and the forward support that he gets. There has not been many second and third chance opportunities for the Kitchener Rangers. But Tukarski, whenever he gets the chance, covers up that first shot as good as anybody. Listed by the Spokane Chiefs in December of 2005. Right through the batting draft and steers this as a veto shot to the corner. McCray with Johnson and Copeland. The flex wide. McCray into the slot. Chukon collided with Azevedo, and it's Halischuk who will chip and chase. Matt Halischuk working against Cowan. Spurgeon pinching in. There's that pinch. Chutron keeps it alive, high off the glass, and belongs to Spurgeon. Justin McRae, Weber, knocked it off his stick as Spalling will shoot it, but not as deep as he wanted. Left Cole Coper towards David Rutherford. Anderson versus Roman and Blackwater to do drawings it comes. Spokane really has no issues with pitching its team in as well because they know in order to get out of the zone, Kitchener has to go to the weak side. And when that happens, the forwards for Kitchener have to be aware and have to support the play better than what they have been doing to this point. Their punt pressure is just relentless in all three zones. And since about the first 13 minutes of this game, when it was all Kitchener, Spokane has been at its suffocating best. Chutron loses a stick. Rutherford on the wraparound. Hops over Blackwater's stick. And then the shot from Wall off the stick of Eunice. Dangerous, dangerous times with 13 seconds remaining here in the second period. Rutherford on the wrap. And it goes right by Blackwater's stick. And Blackwater, who is a left-handed shot, has his body down beneath the goal line. If he gets any wood on this at all, it's 4-1. Kitchener wins the draw cleanly to Azevedo. Eight seconds to go. Now with Duco and Bodker. Azevedo turns. Bodker backhand to Kursky right at the buzzer. And then... He collides with Duco and goes down. And the Spokane Chiefs with three unanswered goals 
will enjoy a two-goal advantage with 20 minutes to go in regulation. Botker with the backhand, Duco on that blue paint, runs into Tukarski at the end of the play. And here, as the whistle, or as the buzzer sounds, Duco right in Tukarski's face, but Tukarski not rattled whatsoever. 28 saves by Dustin Tukarski. The play of the second period is brought to you by Esquire Watches because it's all about ESQ and you. The Spokane Chiefs doing it off the faceoff. Fruit and wins it. Glass steps in. Goes top shelf, glove side, beating Josh Eunice. A well executed play as far as the Chiefs are concerned. Not as well executed on the defensive side as the Rangers would have liked. Lots to come your way in our second period intermission. A chat with Nick Spalling. One minute with Grayson Bowman, and we'll head back to the Sportsnet studios for a connected update. The Western Hockey League champions in command. 3-1 Spokane leading Kitchener. Don Meehan has joined me, the NHL player agent. You've got four players here, split two and two. You've got divided loyalties. Uh, it's pretty tough. I'm trying to cheer for both teams. And the way this tournament's gone this week, I mean, it's been close all the way through. And uh, for the home crowd, I, I wish it was about tied now. But looks like Spokane looks pretty good going into the third period. Who are you representing here? Well, Drayson Bowman and Justin Falk on uh, Spokane, and then I've got Matt Halishuk and Nick Spalling on Kitchener. And I know you've got a busy week coming up at Combines. Don, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. Don Meehan is a busy man right now, so well, he can go either way, boys, right now in terms of who he's going to cheer for. I'll let you take it. Not a bad stable, that's what I have to say. Let's show you what's transpired through 40 minutes. The Kitchener Rangers open the scoring. Mike Massioli creates the rebound. Brandon Maschinter puts it away. 1-0 Rangers at that point. But the Chiefs would come back. Andre Roman on the what was looked to be a wraparound gives it to Blackwater who goes upstairs on Eunice. 1-1 one, one after 20. And then Chris Bruton keeps it alive. Bowman, quick release. Beats Josh Eunice inside the post. 2-1 Spokane. Off the draw, Bruton wins it again. Glass upstairs, love side. 3-1 Spokane after 40 minutes. Second period scoring summary is brought to you by Vaughn. Take your game to the next level. The Rangers leading in the shots on goal category, 29-19. Have yet to score on the power play. And the Spokane Chiefs take all the stats, throw it aside, and lead where it counts most. 20 minutes, maybe more, to decide the champion of Canadian Major Junior Hockey. And a U.S.-based team will enjoy a two-goal lead when we begin this third period. The Chiefs' last Memorial Cup appearance, 1998. They lost to Guelph in a semifinal. They did capture the Memorial Cup in 1991 with a 5-1 victory over Drummondville in the final back in 1991 in one of the most dominating performances I've ever seen in this event. And this group, you come into this building and beat the Kitchener Rangers twice in their own backyard, you deserve to be the champs. But also, there's a long way to go. Spokane has not wavered from its game plan from the second it cut off the plane. So true. Duco slides it in open to Kitchener with Kadri. And Bodker, Pepe pinching down. You'll see a lot of that for Peter DeBoer's team as they try to generate some more offense, which might lead to the odd, odd man rush. But when you're down two, you have to take the odd chance. Kadri for Duco. Checked off the puck by Cowan. Mitch Wall. Cowan joins the rush. Off the blocker of Eunice. Intercepted. Offside. Now onside. Sutron turning against McRae. And this line of McRae, Johnson, and Culper have done a masterful job again for a second straight meeting against the Kitchener trio of Spalling, Azevedo, and Halischuk. And they've been allowed to do their thing because of what Dustin Tukarski has been doing between the pipes. He is not allowed he gets in good position, and Peter, even when there's been traffic in front of him and he hasn't seen the shot, his positioning is so good that the puck hits him. And then when he's asked to make that second and third save, he does so again because he's in good position. At the end of the period, Duco and Bodker trying to connect to cut the deficit for one that did not happen. Mashinger, who has scored the lone goal, Timmons, and Tukarski just got a Is that line for the Rangers near? 
nearly supplied yet another goal. Masioli who drew an assist to the Massinger goal, going to the scoring early in the first. Rutherford, nice feed for Roman with Blackwater, in his skates. Masioli, fine feed for the defender, Kelly. Trevor Glass plays it as well as you can. Roman cutting laterally. Rutherford, Blackwater, huge stop by Eunice. And it's Eunice who knocked the net off himself, and that is a huge save for Josh Eunice. I mean, you look at the momentum in this game, Kitchener really coming out strong here to start the third period. But this save here by Eunice on Blackwater gets not only his confidence up, but the team playing in front of him. 141 into the third. Face off victory, and there's another good one. Off Jared Kelly. Justin Azevedo and Tyler Johnson doing battle in the face off. Azevedo loses the draw cleanly. Callum with a cannon. Eunice with another big stop for the Rangers. And it all starts with possession off the draw. Johnson has been a menace in that area. Peter DeBoer changes. So does Bill Peters. Now the fourth line is still at one another. Trevon Anderson and Akison against Taunton, Flex, and Kellner. Kellner had a couple of good chances in the second period. Taunton is spelled. Takes a look at the referees. Portuzo comes away with it. Scott Tregunna with Akison. Look to return the favor and the big wingspan of Falk in the row. Oh, that's a great gap control, too, Peter. Falk's a fourth-round pick of the Minnesota Wild. Shootron driving. Chance for Weber to pinch if he can get there. He does, but he runs into Johnson. And you know he'll be content to just put pucks in good areas. Because he's done all tournament long. And if you're Kitchener's D and you're committing to the pinch, you better be committed with no hesitation or it will cost you. This Spokane team is great in transition and has great team speed. Spurgeon looking for the redirect of Coper. It did go off the heel of his stick. McCray working on Shutron. Justin McCray, Coper, blocked by Weber, and here's Halischuk. Trying to split the deed. Azevedo throws a big hit. Coper will send it gingerly deep as Azevedo still involved with Johnson by the play. I think Peter DeBoer probably challenged his top line here. Azevedo's ball. Oh, that was a big Peter. draw. No problem. The linesman fell off of Kadri. Wall towards Bowman. Had a man in front. It was Bruton. Bowman has the go-ahead goal in this game. His tournament leading six back in the second period. Duco. Well, the Justin Azevedo line has been going up against the Tyler Johnson line all game, all tournament long. And here Azevedo skates, overskates the puck, takes Johnson to the ice. And from there, the two of them would go after each other until Azevedo would finally come off for the line change. But that battle, no doubt today, has been won by the Johnson line. 16-17 to go in regulation. The Chiefs trying to make it two straight years for a Western Hockey League champion of this MasterCard Memorial Cup. The Vancouver Giants at home as they attend to the linesman who hurt his shoulder when he fell. Yeah, Kevin Hastings there. They're trying to put that shoulder back in place. I think it popped out. A little help from the trainer there. It gets it popped back into place. He'll have to grin and bear it here for 16-17 or longer. 6,827 have jammed into this Memorial Auditorium. The majority hoping for a Ranger victory. They've got a lot of work to do. Timmons back out with Mashinder and Massioli. Timmons, great stop by Tukarski from close range. Rutherford's pulled down. Timmons off the body. Bertuzzo. Tukarski never saw it, but it didn't hit the net. Bertuzzo couldn't get a ton of that shot. He's still smarting from that shoulder injury. 
Shutron banks it, Masioli. Timmons again involved. Rutherford used his glove smartly to backhand it out of the zone. I think that's been the best line for Kitchener. It has. Weber has a veto off the bench. What a return pass! And another brilliant stop by Tokarski off as a veto. Chuck on the cycle as the veto's pulled down by Johnson and they want a penalty at the Kitchener bench. Spalling goes to the back corner and lost the handle and held the help. It's the Rangers with some great chances but they can't find the net. And that's the kind of production and chances that are going to have to be created by Kitchener's top line in order to get back in this game. Bukowski tough to beat tonight. Chuck up ended, wins the battle. Kelly Weber blocked by Bruton. Look at that effort by the Spokane captain. What a surprise. What a warrior that Bruton is. Selling out to make a big defensive play and now racing at the other end. Takes a bump. Great start to this third period. Bodker chips and gives chase with Cadre. Glass finds Bowman ahead to Wall. He overskates Bodker. Cadre, you know who, to Persky again. And Reddington relieves the pressure. Kitchener Rangers have really started to create some good opportunities here in the third period, but Dustin Tokarski has been better. Azevedo with a little give and go. Tokarski with the stop. And earlier, Masioli, Timmons from in tight range. A good stick there by Roman to come back and help out. But still, Tokarski called to the carpet and makes the stop. Dustin Tokarski won a TELUS Cup Midget AAA Championship in 2006 with the Prince Albert Mentos. A game that the Mentos won at 12.06 of triple overtime in that final. He's turned aside 61 shots. He's made 34 saves in the biggest game of his life today. Rutherford to Blackwater, who tied this game in the late stages of the first with his first of the tournament. Blackwater spinning. Roman to the front of the net, pokes it away from Eunice. Blackwater. Off a body. Spokane trying to deliver the knockout punch. Tragana. Slides it in. He'll collide with Cowan. Masioli wraparound stop. And cleared. Pagana gets a chance to go out there with Masioli and Pagana with at the end of the shift doesn't have a ton of speed so he jumps it in, he's first on the puck, picks Cowan off it, Masioli picks up the loose puck and a wraparound attack but again, Dustin Tukarski has been oh so good. Great puck retrieval by the Rangers, not to be outdone by Dustin Tukarski. Weber flips it, that made it through. Tukarski wasn't sure but it caromed out of play. Karski just seems to get better as more shots are put upon him. Weber with Halischuk in front of the net, it bounces off the ice and then up off of the end glass or the end mesh. Turned aside 36 of 37 in the round robin win last Sunday. He has exactly that many saves now, but there's still 12.40 to go in regulation. Off of Halischuk's stick. Vito awaits the ring off the dasher board. Spalling with Halischuk. These guys will barely come off from here on in, you know that. And Coker calmly clears the zone. And with that draw, wait. Dan Kelly leads his way to the line. Spalling to the front. Hooking penalty upcoming to the Chiefs. Play continues. Bodker, what strength.
Hitter Dan Kelly has really asserted himself in this hockey game, jumping up in the rush on a couple of occasions and really taking control here from his own end of the ice. Head up, weaves through the neutral zone, now takes it into the Spokane zone. It's popped up, the sprawling heat fans on it. Kelly with another chance. Meanwhile, in front of the net, Justin Falk on Kelly, right side of your screen, now the center, boom, called for the hook. Fourth power play chance of the day for the Rangers. Clean face-off win. Palaszczuk parked in the high slot. Falling forced to turn and finds Mikel Bunker. Bodker handles again. Weber tipped in front by Hellas and bounces right out of the front. There's the inboard and belongs to Coper. All kinds of pressure, but no finish, thanks in large part to the brilliant play of Tatarski. Bodker fans, Azevedo trailing on this Kitchener power play. Justin Azevedo. Weber dishes for Bodker through the seam. Now has Weber. Weber handles again. Bodker, lots of traffic to the front and off the skate of Weber and out it comes. This line and Fiveson's been out a long time. Bodker racing in with great speed. was the main cog in stopping it. What a captain. What a kid. Kadri. Look at him again. Wow. What an effort by Chris Boot. That's how you win championships. When your veteran leadership performs the way he has all season long. Kadri with Duco and Tregunna. Drop pass. Sutron, out of the box comes Falk, he's by himself, but it's in behind him. Large penalty kill by the Chiefs, we're under 10 to go, and the lead remains two. They exploded for three unanswered in 9-0-1 in the first and early end of the second. Kadri working again against Cowan, keeps his feet moving. But it's Blackwater finds David Rutherford. Fortuza. Roman the loose puck. Timmins. Staples him against the boards. Being urged to let him go by the referee. Good work by this Spokane unit. Blackwater, Rutherford, Roman. And that's what happens when you go weak side, that weak side D pinches. This is the type of skip Bill Peters would like to see the rest of the way. Rutherford trying to cut in front, dives off the post! Shutron saved it. That was in, Shutron brought it back. The Spokane Chiefs. This close to putting the championship game away. The 2008 MasterCard Memorial Cup on Rogers Sportsnet. Brought to you by MasterCard. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. By Irwin Industrial Tools, maker of vice grip locking pliers, marathon saw blades, and other professional grade tools. And by Boston Pizza. You're among friends. The Kitchener Rangers in need of more fireworks, trailing by two, but they got some help from the post here. The post, and watch Ben Chutron sneak in and deflect that puck back underneath Eunice to cover it up to stop that fourth goal from going in. Chutron and the Rangers' dreams of winning a MasterCard Memorial Cup at home are 847, hanging in a balance. He's that far away from winning a franchise's second Memorial Cup. Roger, 
Spurgeon. For Cowan, Spalling. Sends Bruton back. Azevedo steals behind the net for Spalling. Look at the feet out, man, yet. Pallister could have great chance in that me. That almost looked to really like got a piece of the cross. Yeah, it rolled along the bar. Azevedo tipped in front, backhander by Spalling, and Kaparski stopped it again. What a show. Peppy shot blocked. Spurgeon, enough of this. That'd be enough to be icing, though. Look at the draw weight again. Under eight to go. Kitchener leaving it all out there, but they can't find an answer to Dustin Pekarski. Copeland content to slide it deep towards McCray. Collides heavily with the captain. Matt Pepe in his final game of junior hockey. McCray comes away with a puck for Johnson. A weak shot. Azevedo. Palace check. Pekarski. Finds Glass, who scored a huge second period goal to make it 3-1. Shoe time. Block. Stupo. Palace got loose in the doorstep and cleared away in the nick of time by Reddington. Dustin Pekarski. What a performance by the Spokane keeper. The pressure being put on, it's blocked originally, then it goes back down, it's two or three things lying in the crease for Reddington, and earlier on, Halischuk brings it to the forehand, up and off the bar, and out. I thought so. 44 saves now for the product of Watson, Saskatchewan. There are times when I think you create your own good luck. Tukarski's done that here today. and Azevedo. Azevedo trying to cut to the front of the net. Dice to Kersky's down. It still hits him and stays out. It's like a pinata down there. Oh, it's just one of those days when it's all going your way. Rutherford in deep on the four check with the help of Blackwater and Roman. Rangers pulling out all stops, but they can't turn Rutherford, stopped by Eunice. Now the play going back the other way with Eunice having to make a stop, but the show is definitely Dustin Tukarski. Has a beat on net side, tries to jam sandwich. It's lying there once again. Spalling knocks it into Tukarski. So too does Halischuk. And even down and out, Tukarski still able to stop everything that comes his way. Oh, man. What a show. Not bad for a guy who we're told almost had to beg for a tryout for his midget triple A team. Timmons stick lifted. And Wall backhands it down the ice. This will be icing. Yeah, his mother had to send some emails to everybody and their brother and sister to try and get this kid a chance to play hockey. And you know, sometimes those are the greatest stories. When you're told that you can't do something, the intestinal fortitude tells you you can. You get the opportunity and you do so. Tukarski is a prime example of that. Well, he's got one for the ages going on here today at the Kitchener Memorial Auditorium in the final of the 90th Memorial Cup. wasn't tested like this when the Chiefs won it in 91. Azevedo, another big save. Because that time Tukarski was deep in his net. Tested once again. Might as well just let you look. I don't have an adjective for that. Chiefs are five minutes and 54 seconds away from hoisting that wonderful piece of hardware. What a beauty. 3-1, they scored three times in just over nine minutes from late in the first into the second period. 
Blackwater. Bowman, who right now has the go-ahead goal, and he scored the game winner in the 2-1 triumph last Sunday versus Kitchener in the round robin portion. And then Trevor Glass in his second Memorial Cup final on the board for the first time. He lost 3-1 as a member of the Medicine Hat Tigers to the Vancouver Giants last year at the Pacific Coliseum. Well, it's interesting, Peter, watching the Stanley Cup last night. Some of the guys that participated in this event, you look at Stahl, who played in this event for Peterborough two years ago, Sidney Crosby three years ago for Ramuski. Weber blocked by Coper. They bat at it in front. Spalling upended, and here's Justin McRae. Heavy collision with Weber. Reddington, he made a huge play to clear it out of the crease moments ago. Chutron, will he get there? No. Levko Coper, he scored a huge overtime winner in the round robin opener against Belleville. Chutron to the line. The Chiefs await and Bruton backhands it deep. Justin Falk. And kind of hurt the home side on. They don't want a franchise record season ending in this manner. Duco in his last game in junior hockey spilled by David Rutherford. Duco in his skates, rings it. Bodker had gone in the direction of the net. Blackwater can't clear past Kelly, but Wall will backhand it out. Boy, does this team do an unbelievable job staying in what they do best. They just, yeah, discipline. They just don't stray. And yet Kitchener has put them to the absolute utmost test to this point. And when they've exposed the system a little bit, you know who's been there. All 47 saves of it for Dustin Kaparski. Masioli with Tregunna. Reddington back to the end board. The glass chips it effectively. Rutherford, two drawn on him on the pitch to the front of the net. Timmons, another shot blocked by another veteran leader in Rutherford. Selling out for a title. Battle ensues on the boards. Kagan in his final junior hockey game, kicking at it. And flipped down the ice by Roman. A race, Coper and Shutron. And he has to be dog tired on this ship, talking about Shutron. Tyler Johnson. Finds McRae under three minutes to go in regulation. Weber, Azevedo drops it for Spalling. Another stop by Tukarski. Spurgeon, what a play. What poise to find Bowman and exit the zone. Spalling, Azevedo, and Halaska. Great defensive zone coverage by Spokane. Here's a chance. Pepe moved in, but shot it wide. Bortuzzo let it go, and Tukarski hangs on. The play of the game is brought to you by Acklin's Granger, Canada's leading distributors of industrial and safety supplies and fasteners. The Spokane Chiefs trailing 1-0, and then Andre Roman gets on his horse. Short side pass, Judd Blackwater there, up top to beat Eunice. Roman with great speed, Blackwater with great finish, and that really turned the momentum of this game around into the Chiefs' favor. Start to look towards Josh Eunice for an extra attacker. Pete DeBoer goes with four forwards now as Bodker's back on defense. 
And another faceoff up coming deep in Chiefs territory. The Botker's got such great speed, and he's so responsible defensively that Peter DeBoer can afford to do this. But with his great shot and puck handling skills, he really gives you that extra boost on the back end. Signs of desperation creeping in to the Kitchener game. Goaltender stays in. Azevedo matched against Johnson. Now Azevedo waved out of the circle for Spalling. Cowan for Cooper and out. Went around the ring. Spalling will get there first with a little room. Spalling block shot by the big defender Cowan. Everybody in the Chiefs just dropping to the ice to block shots. And when this guy goes down, he probably takes up half the net anyways. Faceoffs has been such a key in this game. Spalling gets in there against Johnson. Now watch at the execution. Cowan, chip off the boards. Goldberg, another chip off the boards. Zone exited. Great execution by Spokane. Same two. Azevedo, a clean faceoff win. Bodker off the glass, falling, net empty. Hallister trying to jam it in. Reddington. Weber can't handle a bouncing puck. Duco shovels it deep. Off of Duco. Reddington one more time. Bodker at the line, trying to send it deep, does so. As a veto, it's there. Trying to jam it home. It's loose in the crease. They continue to fight for it. McCray passed Weber and out. Duco feathers it towards Azevedo. Duco, a man in front. Again, they jam. Backhander. Did he stop that too? Spokane Chiefs are going to win their second Memorial Cup. What a performance by the Chiefs. And Cowan picks up his first goal, rewarded for his efforts in his own zone. The shot blocking ability is put on display tonight. And what will likely be a top five pick two drafts from now. You might want to raise that one or two notches. says it all for the Kitchener Rangers. Jared Cowan, 16-year-old by hockey terms, 17 because he turned that age early in the new year. And his goal is going to put the Memorial Cup on ice for the Western Hockey League champions. And as I stated earlier, when you can come into Kitchener and beat this Ranger team twice in their own back to raise the Memorial Cup. Never once wavered from the game plan Bill Peters put in place. They stemmed the early tie. Brandon Mashinger scored first. Blackwater tied it with 16. 16.01 into the first. Two rather early in the second, and they've made it stick. And how about this reception here? for what's been a great host city. Our hats off to all the volunteers, Steve Bienkowski, John Thompson, the head organizers, and it'll be a very bitter pill to swallow for Peter DeBoer and Steve Spot, just two terrific coaches and two terrific gentlemen. And take your hat off to the job that Tim Speltz, the general manager, Bill Peters, who's about to win his first Memorial Cup in his third year at the helm of the Chiefs. And look at that. 4.4 with a free goal lead. He's still mad about where the faceoff is going to be placed. I thought they were going to call a penalty on Spokane. That's what it looked like to me. And Dustin Tokarski... 53 saves. You can celebrate Western League champions. The Spokane Chiefs are the 2008 MasterCard Memorial Cup champions.
a great run for the players who will not return to junior hockey. A very special year for the Rangers. But this is a Spokane team, Peter, that when you look at the age of this team, this may be the start of a small dynasty in the Western Hockey League. Let's send it down to Rob Falls. Rob? Well, here's the captain of the Memorial Cup champion, Spokane Chiefs. Chris Bruton, it has been a tough haul, but you guys played a certain style and you would not let it go away. You know, I, we've said it all year and it's a team game and we completely selled out to do that. You know, there's always going to be another goal scorer, another, you know, whatever, but this team was all for the team and an unselfish play was our motto and, and it just proved it and showed it all, all the weekend. As you get ready for the handshakes, at the end of that game, you sacrificed it all. You laid out in front of a couple of shots. It was not going to get to your net. No, I mean, uh, you got to sacrifice something to win and obviously uh, anything at this point, all the guys were going down to block shots, doing whatever it took to win and... Uh, you know, I could be proud of the guys in the organization and everything. I mean, I'm just on top of the world. Congratulations. Get in that lineup. Thank you very much. Thanks. Grayson Bowman, the game-winning goal, his second game-winning goal of this MasterCard Memorial Cup. Both of them coming against Kitchener. He led the tournament, did the Carolina draft pick in goals with six. And the Chiefs, a perfect 4-0 here in Kitchener. Sam, you and I both thought the dangerous team that a lot of people didn't know very much about. I had an opportunity to see them in games three and four in Leftbridge when they clinched the Western Hockey League title. They suffocated a pretty offensive laden Hurricanes bunch in those two games. And they came here and did pretty much the same. Series against Tri City. And Bill Peters told us before the game that was a seven game series. Really series. And the ability to win under that pressure, those kind of circumstances, really helped his team come into this event prepared, ready. And what more can you say about the results this guy was able to produce with his team? They beat the defending Memorial Cup champions, the Vancouver Giants, in round two in six games. The final score in game six, four to one. In that monumental seven game series in the Western Conference Final for the Tri City Americans in Tri Cities in Game Seven, they won the final game four to one. Here in Kitchener in the final of the MasterCard Memorial Cup in another do or die type situation, it's four to one. Rod has another guest. With Mick Wall of the Spokane Chiefs. Tell me about the emotion here. You guys came in, you gave up one goal, but you came battling back. Oh, we stuck with it. We've had this team all year, and uh, we, we love these guys. Everybody loves everybody on our team, and it was the best feeling we've ever had, and uh, it's great. You guys bought into a system that Coach Peters put in and put it right into place. Yeah, all year we've had the same system, and it's worked great for us, and we stuck with it here, and it obviously worked. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. Guys? Thanks so much, Rob. Mitch Wall will be a high selection in the first couple of rounds, I'm sure, in the upcoming NHL draft. He enjoyed a fine tournament. Sam, what a goaltending performance by 18-year-old Dustin Tikarski. Well, it's funny. We had the chance to go out and watch this team on December 1st, and we looked at the discipline. We looked at the systems. We looked at the goaltending, and that, at that time, Spokane was on a pretty good roll, and we thought, wow, if this team plays like this every game, this is a team that can not only go deep in the Western Hockey League playoffs, but maybe get a chance to represent the WHL at the Memorial Cup, and I think that one sampling was pretty evident of what this team was able to do all season long. And that was a good sampling because they beat a very good Calgary team in that game that we saw way back when. For more, once again, here's our Rob Falls. Ladies and gentlemen, the Waterloo region should be incredibly proud for the way that you have hosted the 2008 MasterCard Memorial Cup. Let's salute all the teams that took part in this event. The Gatineau Olympique. The Belleville Bulls, your Kitchener Rangers, and the Spokane Chiefs. For a few words on behalf of the title sponsor of this event, please to introduce Lillian Tomovich, the VP of Brand Marketing for MasterCard Canada. Thank you.
On behalf of MasterCard, I just wanted to say how proud we are to be a sponsor of the Canadian Hockey League and the MasterCard Memorial Cup. We're blown away every year by the wonderful young talent we have in this country. On that note, I'd like to thank Kitchener for being an incredible host city this year. The fans were amazing. Thank you. Thank you. The passion of the fans was incredible. And last but not least, I wanted to, of course, congratulate our winners for 2008, the Chiefs. Congratulations. And we hope to see you all next year in Ramouski. Congratulations again and have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Lillian Tomovich of MasterCard. This fabulous piece of hardware goes to the tournament MVP of the 2008 MasterCard Memorial Cup. And in this game, he put on a show. Ladies and gentlemen, the Stafford Smythe Trophy goes to Dustin Tokarski of the Spokane Chiefs. Dustin, don't go too far away. It says tick-tock on the back of your helmet. Well, the time was running out, and you kept making big save after big save. Well, it's about time that it's on for our team. Our D's been amazing all year, and, you know, when, uh, when I wasn't there, they were. Well, as you and the rest of your teammates have told us all week long, you bought into the system that your coach laid down, and it was evident today. Yeah, and, you know, we play a D-first system. You know, our offense feeds off our D, and that's what got her done. Dustin Tokarski. This is your trophy. Congratulations. Thank you. Now, while I help the lovely Miss Lillian off the ice so we don't have a major accident, it's time now to bring out the president of the Canadian Hockey League, the commissioner of the Ontario Hockey League, because he has a terrific honour. It's one of the greatest honors in sport. I'm very pleased to welcome David Branch. Thank you very much, Rob. The 90th MasterCard Memorial Cup was truly beyond the ordinary. On behalf of the Canadian Hockey League, I would like to express our sincere appreciation. City of Kitchener, Kitchener Rangers, the Kitchener Rangers Hockey Club and all you fans for making it so special. As well, I would be somewhat remiss if I didn't acknowledge our two very special fans here this week. They are special, they made us special, and that's Sklar and Nathan Caitlin over in the corner here from Sault Ste. Marie. Thank you very much, guys. I would now like to call upon our military to bring out the Memorial Cup. and parents. Congratulations. I'd like to now call upon the captain, Chris Bruton, to accept the trophy.
okay? Any idea? Let's try this one? Yeah, come on. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. presentation that no one will ever forget but in Spokane and the Chiefs organization whether it's snapped in two or not they are the champions of Canadian major junior hockey and with more from the Chiefs and their head coach he's with Rob Falls. Well I'm pretty sure everybody wanted a piece of the Memorial Cup and the Spokane Chiefs have certainly done that with Bill Peters your guys came in with a with a plan and they stuck to it. Yeah, they really did. I'm proud of the guys, how hard they battled here out in Kitchener. And not just here, getting through the Western Hockey League was a tough task. We were able to do that. Tonight is win number 70 for us. You know, you add up 50 in the regular season, 16 and 4. you got to win 70 games at a high level to get this prize. It's tough to do, so I'm proud of my guys. You knew that your guys would defensively lock it down. Dustin Tokarski was brilliant. Well, he's been like that all year. We've had great goaltending. We're so fortunate. We're too deep at that position. Uh, Ticks, you know, he's a winner. He won the Teles Cup, now he's won the Memorial Cup, and he's going to have a great career down the road, and he's a great kid, good goaltender. They're a very young team. You could be back again in Ramuski. Well, there's no guarantees, I know that, but I'll tell you what, the experience out here in Kitchener, Waterloo area, the people did a fantastic job. If we're fortunate enough to get to Ramuski, it'll be, it'll be a treat. Bill, go get your piece of the Memorial Cup. Thank you. Bill Peters in his third year at the helm. This is a team that three years ago was at the bottom of the Western Hockey League in the Western Conference. What a turn in the last couple of years. And I think it's just uh, great that if you're one of the other 59 teams across the Canadian Hockey League, your rise to prominence can be so close. So never think you're out of it. The opportunity always exists. And the Spokane Chiefs prove that to fruition here in this event. Dustin Dekarski with 53 saves and a 4-1 victory. Kitchener found the net first, courtesy of Brandon Mashinder at 5-0-1. But the big goal for me, and we showed it to you, as our play of the game was Judd Blackwater's first of the tournament, the 20-year-old from Leftbridge playing his final game in junior hockey. He got off the schneid. They stemmed the tide. And you know going in to the dressing room, they felt like, Phew, we're okay, now let's go ahead with the rest of our plan. It's a situation where they were able to take Kitchener's crowd right out of it, gain some confidence, gain some momentum back, and then when this Spokane team gets a lead, it's awfully, awfully hard to get it back. We proved that again here today. Rob with one of the true unsung heroes of this event. Tyler Johnson is with me. He's had a quick turn with the Memorial Cup. Both Sam and Pete throughout this tournament talked about the work that you did. You knew what your job was. You were a shutdown guy and that's what you had to do. Yeah, I mean, team comes first obviously and we've done that all year and uh, our line's been playing great D so we've been playing like a shutdown line this whole playoffs and we've done great with it. So, I mean, I mean you do all this just to hold that trophy so uh, it feels great. Now, this is the one you want. Get in there for your picture. There we go. Tyler Johnson joining us. What a treat this is to watch this part of the MasterCard Memorial Cup. Well, I've talked about the Chiefs maybe being on the verge of going back to Ramuski. Tyler Johnson, 17. Culper, 17. Tokarski, 18. They, they can return 18 or 19 players. 
This is going to be a very, very difficult team to beat. They'll be the favorite heading in to the CHL season come September, I think. And as the overage players, it'll be interesting to see who comes back. And if they can provide the kind of leadership that was provided for this club, you're very well right, Peter. We could see them in Ramuski next year. The Spokane Chiefs are the 2008 MasterCard Memorial Cup champions. I'd like to thank our great crew, Rob Falds, my fine partner, Sam Cosentino, the people of Kitchener. It has been a wonderful event in this city that is known for its support of junior hockey. You've done a wonderful job. And for a look back at the 90th Memorial Cup, we leave the last words to Rob Fultz. There are many facets to Memorial Cup Week. Most memorable are the people. The desire on the faces of the players. The intensity of the coaches. The fans in the stands and those that come from across the CHL wearing the colors of the teams they love. They are here because, because it's the cup. It's special to watch the players before the game, even with the enormity of what lies ahead, trying to keep things as normal as possible. Sometimes things don't go always as expected. Meeting a local celebrity always stands out. And what can top an Elvis sighting? or two, or three, or four. The joy of victory is plain to see. The crush of defeat hits hard. Not all the action is on the ice. The energy of this team is infectious. The graciousness of a team just saying merci will always be remembered. To the celebration of young men one step away from the final goal. It's the people that make the Memorial Cup so special and why this moment makes it unforgettable.